Cause people to follow all of his ways You are not to turn aside To the left or to the right You are not to turn aside To the left to the right So be careful, yes people To follow all of his ways Be careful, yes people To follow all of his ways You are not to turn aside To the left or to the right You are not to turn aside To the left or to the right You must walk in all of his ways The Yahoo of your Elohim That you may live a long and prosperous life for all of your days in the land which you inherit. Be careful, yes, people, to follow all of his ways. Be careful, yes, people, to follow all of his ways. You are not to turn aside. Everybody. My name is Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Nicole. I'm Eli. And I'm Jason. And we are the Yahoo and the Tour channel. And this is the Little Ecclesia. This is a awesome meeting time. This is the place where we have been waiting to get to the Shabbat. This is um, this is it. Thank you guys very, very much for joining us. We are the people who believe what, Jaden? We believe the law, statutes, commandments, the Torah, the first five books of the Bible are forever. They have never been away with. They did not die on the cross of the Messiah. Paul didn't do it with them, Peter didn't do it with them, the disciples, they never got abandoned, they never got disappeared. So the Torah is good for all times, it is good for all generations, it is good through heaven and earth being taken away, right? Because the Torah is going to live through all that, we know that one, not one jot or one tittle of the Torah is going to be gone. And so this is what we have dedicated our lives to, and so we are a little family out in the middle of a jungle that is hanging out with you. Uh, we are reading scriptures, and today we are reading in Genesis, and um, let's begin with a little word of prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, we come before you as your people. Father, we come before you as those who are seeking your ways. Father, we thank you for your son, and we thank you for bringing this little ecclesia together. We thank you for your creation and for just the enormous beauty that you have delivered to all of us and the way forward and the way home. Father, I ask that Everybody who's listening to this is blessed and that people are able to see and the eyes are able to be open and ears are able to hear what you have to say. And Father, I ask that you will dwell with us and you will be with us and you will not forget us, Father. We are your people. We cannot wait for your son. We cannot wait for the kingdom to come, Father, and get rid of all this evil and all this nasty on these grounds all around us, Father. Please walk with us and be with us and don't forget us. We are awaiting you. We thank you for everything. We ask this in the name of Yahushua. Amen. All right, Mystical, who is in our chat that we need to give hugs and loves and hellos to? We have Brother Glenn, Carla, The Grand, Zach, Rhiannon, and Damon, 
And Judith. Hi, everybody. Damon, how you doing, little buddy? Hope you're well, Slaggers. Brother Glenn, Judith, Carla, haven't seen you in a long while. I hope you are doing well, dear sis, and everybody out there. And everybody in the future, everybody um, who hears this, you know, hopefully you guys are well and hopefully you guys are blessed. Well, let's begin, gentlemen, with what we do every single Shabbat, and that is we go over some of the most beautiful things that we have, that we will ever have, which are the laws, statutes, and commandments of our Creator. Now, as we go through these, um, let us, if anybody in the chat room, and Worldwide Widows here, shalom, brother, much love to you. Good, you're doing great, Damon. That is super good to hear, buddy. Hope you're taking care of your mama and dad and, and doing a good job at that, little buddy. Okay, so let us continue. If anyone in the chat room has any questions or you guys want us to um, stop on a command or go over a little bit or something doesn't make sense, just pop it in here. We are. This is the fun part of doing these live is that we can interact with all of you guys and we can chat and you know just, just kind of get stuff off our chest however it is. And um, so let us begin. The very first commandment, and again, for those who do not know where we're about to read, we are about to read the commandments that most people and most religions have said they don't have to do anymore, that they do not apply to them, that somehow these are for the old ancient people of back in the days. And this is not true at all. These are for us. Every single one of these commands can be used today, right now, to bring light into your life and to to get rid of darkness. And as we start getting rid of the darkness in our life, that means we start obeying the Torah. And the Torah, as, J as Jaden said, is Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. There's only five books that have the Torah, which is our moral law, which is our not just our moral law, but it's our life law that we, we must walk according to if we want to take that journey into the kingdom to come, if we want to be part of the obedient people of the future. And, and it's definitely not the, the, the people that are you know eating pork doing what they want to do, doing, you know, just, just basically living as they want to live. That's, that's not what the kingdom is all about. Okay. Commandment number one for everybody is be fruitful. Hold on before you start. Right, just you let everybody know that's on Yah scriptures online now. Oh, right. Instead of Yahoo. And yeah. Line. So, um, did you pop that in there? Yeah. Mr. Cole. Okay. Yeah. So for anyone who doesn't know, um, last week we lost, uh, well, we didn't lose it. It got taken away for a little bit. Um, our domain name, Yahoo and the Torah.net. Um, we have the um, the criminal enterprise known as the Hallelujah Scriptures that uh, we're on copyright strike number 251 or more. I've lost count really in the 200s. And so, um, yeah, and so we do have it back online. We hope to, to get Yahoo and the Torah.net back up next week. But the downloads are still there. All the downloads, everything is there, um, including this right there. So it'll either be at Yahoo and the Torah.net um, in the future or um, YahScriptures.online. Okay, um, uh-oh, Damon D lost some power because the trees fell on the power cord. All right, well, hopefully you guys got that dealt with. All right, gentlemen, be fruitful is commandment number one. Number two is multiply. Replenish the earth. So do it. Have you made over the fish, fowl, and every living creature? The, the herb and er the herb bearing in every tree is for food. Man and woman should build their own families. Master sin. Every clean moving thing that lives shall be food for you. Do not eat the blood. Walk before me and be perfect. Guard Yahuwah's covenant, laws, statutes, and commandments. And guys, that, that is reiterated 50 over 53 times in scriptures. That is the commandment that we have more than anything else. Okay, every male shall be circumcised at eight days old. Teach your children the commands and guard the way of Yahuwah. Remember Yahuwah's name for all generations. Keep the Passover, Pesach. Keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread, Matzah. There is one Torah for the stranger and one for the Ibrahim. Sanctify all firstborn to Yahuwah. There are no mighty ones before Yahuwah. You shall not make graven images. Do not bring it whose name to not. Keep the Sabbath. Honor your parents. Do not kill. Do not break wedlock. Do not steal. Do not make false accusations against your neighbor. Do not covet anything of your neighbors. Do not make an altar from uh, do not make an altar from rock that a tool has touched. Do not go up to the altar by the steps. If a man steals cattle, he shall store it five times. Yeah, who is laws for criminals? Do not lie with beasts. No sacrifices to other gods. Do not oppress the stranger, fatherless, or widow. Do not charge your brother interest. If you borrow your neighbor's raiment, return it to him before sunset. Do not curse the ruler of your people. Do not eat what is torn of any beast. No false report. Do not follow the multitude of evil. Do not judge righteously against the poor. Bring back your enemy's cattle if you find it going astray. Help the animals to your enemy. Stay away from rumors and gossipers. Take no bribes. Do not oppress the stranger. Love the stranger. 
Give your, give your land rest in the seventh year. Do not mention any pagan names. Keep the feast of Yahuwah. Do not cook your goat in his mother's milk. Obey the messenger Yahuwah sends before you. Do not bow down to other Elohim. Serve Yahuwah. Make no covenant with other Elohim or outsiders of the land. Do not make or use the oil on a normal person. Do not make or use this perfume on a normal person. Do not eat fat. Do what you say you are going to do. Return what is your neighbor's. Obey Yahuwah's dietary laws. Women's time of separation laws. Obey Yahuwah's hygiene laws. Keep the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippurim. Do not uncover the nakedness of your family. Do not take your woman's sister for a wife. Do not lie with a woman in her uncleanness. No, you shall not sacrifice your children to Moloch. Do not be a sodomite. Be holy. Do not reap the corners of your field, or, your, or you shall not glean your vineyard. Do not deal falsely, or you fraud your neighbor. Do not lie, or be a liar. Pay your workers for the day's wage they are due. Do not harm the disabled. Do not endanger your neighbor. Do not hate your brother. Rebuke your neighbor for his sin. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do not divert your cattle. Do not mingle your seed. Do, Do not, not lingle, mingle linen and wool. Do not lie with a taken woman. Do not eat the fruit of the trees for three years. Do not practice sorcery. Do not round your beard or the corners of your head. Do not cut yourself for the dead. Do not get tattoos. Do not prostitute your daughter. Do not defile your temple. Do not consult the medium. Respect your elders. Have correct weights and measurements. Do not walk in the manners of the nation. Keep the feast of first fruits, Shavuot, or Mercount. Keep the feast of trumpets, Yom Hurrah. Keep the feast of Sukkot, Shimni Atzeret. If you blaspheme the Yahuwah, you shall be put to death. If you kill your neighbor's animal, you must give him another. Repay injury for injury. Honor the Jubilee year. Confess your sins to, to Yahuwah and repay who you have trespassed against. The Torah of Bina Nazir. Where is easy on the four corners of your garments? The law of whoever touches a corpse. Follow Yahuwah's law of inheritance. Torah of keeping your oath to Yahuwah. Do not add or take away from the word. Guard your soul. Learn to fear Yahuwah. You shall love Yahuwah with all your heart. Find the laws upon your hand and the front that's between your eyes. Write the laws on your doorposts. Do not tempt Yahuwah. Do what is right and good in the sight of Yahuwah. Do not be afraid of your enemies. Remember Yahuwah. Circumcise your heart. Cleave to Yahuwah. Swear by his name. Destroy craven images. Do not make an idol of Yahuwah as the pagans do to their Elohim. Rejoice in all Yahuwah has blessed you with. Do not do what is right in your own eyes. Do not... Hearken unto the words of the false prophets. Do not make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. You shall not eat any abominable thing. You shall give to a stranger of clean food that dies of itself, but you shall not eat of it. Give tithe of your increase of seed year by year. Laws at the end of the seven-year release. Do not borrow from the nations. Do not harden your heart, nor shirt your hand from the poor. Guard month one of Yahuwah's calendar. Three times a year, all males shall appear before Yahuwah. You shall make judges and officers in all your gates. Do not plant Asherah poles near the altar. There must be two or three witnesses. Hearken unto the prophet Yahuwah has chosen. Father test to Deuteronomy. Do not remove your neighbor's property line. How to deal with a false witness among tour keepers. The first child is get double portions. If you if your brother's cattle or clothes are lost and you find them, you must return them. A woman must not wear what pertains to a man, nor a man wear what pertains to a woman. If you find a bird's nest with the mother and the babies, or eggs, or take the babies, but not the mother. Spit it out there, son. If you build a new house with a flat roof that they lived on, you must put a railing around it. Do not be a prostitute. Do not use dirty money. The laws of divorce. Do not take a person's millstone for a pledge. If you lend to your brother, do not enter his house to get your payment. He was bring it to you. Return his clothing before sunset if that was his pledge. Do not oppress a hired servant that is poor and needy. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Do not go back for the forgotten sheep in the field. Leave it for the stranger, fatherless and widow. Do not muzzle your ox when he treads out grain. If your brother dies and has no child, you shall take his wife and name the firstborn after your brother. At the end of the seven years, you are to read the Torah at the Feast of Sukkot. All right, so for everybody that has never ever heard those, those are magnificent. Those are amazing, and those are the laws, statutes, and commandments of our Creator. Now, also on, the, on our website, we also have a couple things here for later on, a couple later on in the afternoon or tomorrow, whenever you guys want to. Um, there's some, we put some quizzes up there that we actually did ourselves and Bible basics, Jaden did this one. So let's see if, uh, if you guys ever make it through the Bible basics and you can get 20 out of 20, that's Jaden's, uh, who Eli did the Moses questions. Yeah. yeah Eli did the questions on Moses and Caden started up right here. Messiah, Yahushua, Jesus quiz questions. So if you guys are ever bored and want to take a look at that, um, those are available for you. All right. Now, before we begin, I want to take a quick look 
at something that we've been. This is not. Um, this is not complete by any means. But these are some of the more blaringly um, different things that we get when we're reading the targums. And so we're trying to keep a little list of this. And, and again, we haven't done a really good job on this yet, keeping this. But these are some of the things that we have, I don't know if we can say we've learned or that we have new information in the targums. And I want to kind of go over a couple of these before we get into today's reading. And so the first one that we have is, is bones. The, in Genesis 1, we did not, we've never heard in scriptures that Yah created um, exactly how many bones, how much fiber ner nerves and, and all this kind of stuff. And, and this is what we learned from that. And I'll read this real quick. In the image of Yahuwah, he created him with 240 and eight members with 360 and five nerves and overlaid them with skin and filled it with flesh and blood, right? Male and female in their bodies, he created them. We'd never heard of that. The other thing we had never heard of is about the snake skin. And we had heard that previously. Um, where did we read that? Was that in Jasher? I believe, but I think it said it was lambskin. Was it lambskin? Where is it? Because it, it was sacrifice. Because Yahoo made sacrifice and gave them the clothing of the animal. Okay. And so this is, this is another thing that we don't know anything about or if this is real or if it's not. So Genesis 3 on this one, it says, And Yahuwah Elohim made to Adam and to his wife vestures of honor from the skin of the serpent, which he had cast from them upon the skin of their flesh instead of that adornment which had been cast away and he clothed them. So again, these are things that we, you know, if, if it's not in scriptures, um, basically I, I don't, I, I just, uh, you know, you got to leave it as kind of a uh, an iffy thing. All right, here's the thing also that we heard um, we did not know. Angels bringing the animals to the ark. In scriptures, in regular scriptures, in the Torah, we don't know this. And so this is what it says. And of all that liveth of all flesh, two of every kind shall go into the ark to be preserved alive with three, male and, with thee, excuse me, male and female shall they be, of the fowl after his kind and of the cattle after his kind and of every reptile of the earth after his kind, two of every sort shall enter to thee by the hand of the angel who will take and cause them to enter to thee to be preserved. And before this, the best that we knew is that they went, all the animals went before um, Noah and they, they, they basically, uh, they knelt. And the ones who knelt are the ones that got in. And where did we get that from? Was that Jasher? That's Jasher. I think that was Jasher. Okay. The next one was, um, yeah, and, and that's right. Yeah, there's enmity between me and the snake. And that, that was one thing that we found, Grand, that was a little, little odd. Okay. So let's continue in the next one. Um, feeding containers on the ark. This is one thing that we we didn't ever know about, but it makes sense. Make thee an ark of the wood of cedars, a hundred and fifty cells shalt thou make to the ark in its left side, and thirty and six in its breadth, and ten cabins in the midst to lay up in them provisions. And so this was like more of um, stuff that we didn't know, right? It actually gives us how many different kind of containers and rooms and things of this nature. We didn't know this. Here's the one that, um, the, the next one was, a, you know, one of these that we, uh, you know, it's kind of a, hmm, <laughs> essentially what they're saying in this is that this, this king of all is like a Nephilim king ended up riding on the ark and this sounds like something out of a uh, storybook right this sounds like something that this I, I don't know but you know here it is and Og came who had been spared from the giants that died in the deluge and had ridden protected upon the top of the ark and sustained with food by Noah not being spared through high righteousness, but that the inhabitants of the world might see the power of Yahuwah and say, were there not giants who in the first times rebelled against Yahuwah of the world and perished from the earth? This is one of these iffy ones that I, I, don't, I, I'm, I, I don't believe it. But anyway, the next one is um, the thing that, again, I don't think this is true as well. Eleazar being the son of Nimrod. Um, we had never heard that before, and I, I, do, not, I do not believe that. Um, let me pop this off real quick so I can see this. Um, and that the next one is that Shim is Melchizedek. And after they said it in this, everywhere it just kind of started making sense. And it said, and Melchizedek, who was Shim bar Noah, the king of Jerusalem. And that's the son of Noah. So those are things that we found already that are just very much different than what you read in scriptures and so we will continue on today and see what we can figure out the bottom translation that we're going into is the ex hallelujah scriptures and it is absolutely free of charge you can download that at yahscriptures.online if you so choose and um 
you can. It's it's all available for free. All right. Anything else happening in the chat, Mr. Cole? No. Just that Glenn says that there's some info in other books that is good to know info, but it, if it can't be verified anywhere and should be used with a grain of caution. Yeah, and, and that's very much true. And anytime anything leads us off the path of salvation or leads us off of the path of the Torah, that's the red flag. And, you know, we could take these other... I guess it's like adjectives, the, the describing words or describing situations or things that we don't know. And as long as it isn't something that, um, I guess, becomes uh, doctrine to us in the terms of doctrine that would hurt us or harm us is what we're, we're trying to avoid. Okay, so here we are, Genesis 27. He says, just remember Satan as a master of confusion. Oh, abso absolutely. You can look at the Hallelujah Scriptures and you can look at them not giving out Bibles for 13 years. And the master of confusion is that Satan himself was what had full control of this. And, you know, he is a master of confusion. And so everyone has to be very, very careful that um, Satan will come and masquerade as Yah, and he will get you and trap you, and he will take you. The grant says stay the narrow way. Absolutely. Don't go to the left. Don't go to the right. There's no reason to. The left and the right will is, is the path of destruction. Okay, here it is, everyone. All right, Genesis 27. And it came to be when Yitzhak was old and his eyes were too dim to see that he called Esau, his elder son, and said to him, my son. And he answered him, here I am. And he said, see, see now I am old. I do not know the day of my death. Now then, please take your weapons, your quiver and your bow and go out to the field and hunt wild game for me and make me a tasty dish such as I love and bring it to me to eat in order that my being may barack you before I die. And Ribka heard when Yitchak spoke to Esau, his son. And Esau went to the field to hunt wild game and bring it in. And Ribka spoke to Yaakov, her son, saying, See, I heard your father speak to Esau, your brother, saying, Bring me wild game and make me a tasty dish to eat and barack you in the presence of Yahuwah before my death. And now, my son, listen to my voice according to what I command you. Please go to the flock and bring me two choice young goats, and I make a tasty dish from them for your father, such as he loves. And you shall take it to your father, and he shall eat it, so that he might barak you before his death. And Yaakov said to Rebka, his mother, See, Esau, my brother, is a hairy man, and I am a smooth-skinned man. What if my father touches me? Then I shall be like a deceiver in his eyes, and shall bring a curse on myself, and not a baraka. But his mother said to him, let your curse be on me, my son. Only obey my voice and go get them for me. All right, let's talk about this real quick, guys. Let's, let's talk about this whole situation um, that just went down. And I will tell you, by having twins, I can tell who's walking up to me without looking. And I can also see who's talking to me without, and I know who you guys are, simply by your movements, simply by the way you guys, probably by the way you smell as well. One of you guys might smell a little worse than the other, but you know, <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, but for like the other day, Eli came walking up to me from behind and I knew it was Eli because he had, has this little slough, slough, slough thing to him. And so I knew it was Eli. And I said, hi, Eli. Eli goes, hi. Now we're talking about a family that has lived together an entire life. One guy, one, one guy is, is a field guy. One guy is a kind of a, a tent guy, right? And so um, how is this possible that, that I, I guess, first of all, is this woman a deceiver trying to deceive her husband? Or what, what, what do you guys make of this entire situation? Just stopping at this point right here without knowing any more of this. What do you guys think about this? Uh, I see some deception. Some deception. Uh, she's taking... Yah's promises into her own hands, right? We know that she knows who's going to rule, right? We know who's going to be over Esau. We know who like, Jacob's going to be the head of, like, the nations. And I think she's trying to take the prophecy into her own hands when Yah could have just done it himself. Yeah, and one thing that I think everyone should might possibly understand, and I've come to this understanding, that I believe this is what you would call a ruse. Like, um, the mother and the father knew what their son was into in all of their stuff. And I believe I, and again, this is only my guess is I believe that this was a ruse. I believe that, um, they said they, the son, the, the father, <laughs> like, like this couldn't go on. Like if you guys walked up to me and you guys in different voices, there was, there's absolutely no way that this would go down. 
And so let's let's continue on. Eli, do I need to head up to the target? I have you read one more. Okay. Dr. So, Ramsey believes the same. Yeah, okay. Good. And then maybe it's just not me. I'm just I just don't know how that would go down exactly. And so if 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 we are talking of a, a ruse or where that the mom and dad are in on this, um who, who's 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 being bad? Or is there any deception at all when they're the ones that are doing it? I guess they they did deceive their kid. All right, let's continue on. Thirteen. But his mother said to him, let your curse be on me, my son. Only obey my voice and go get them for me. And he, okay, hold on real quick. Now, if somebody, if we are keeping Torah, if we have, if we know we're not to lie and our parents gave us this command to lie. No, so there's either you disobeyed them or you we're either, lie. Yeah, we're either disobeying our earthly parents or we're disobeying our uh, spiritual father. So... Is there any righteousness in this act at all? Is anyone? I don't think so, but we also know that Yahuda was a crazed, uh, he did some crazy sins, and still Yahushua came from that line, so. Right, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, 14. And he went and fetched them and brought them to his mother, and his mother made a tasty dish such as his father loved. All right, so mom knows what Pops is going to like, and um, here it is. And it was, and then we're at the top, guys, on the targets. And it was when Ishak was old and his eyes were darkened from seeing. What do you mean his eyes were darkened from seeing? What does that mean? He's gone blind. He's tired yeah. of seeing. Oh, okay. Dark, okay. Darkened from seeing. I guess you, uh, when you see too much, you go blind. <laughs> He's I don't tired know. of seeing. It's, it's interesting. I haven't read this version, so you guys get first um, <laughs> uh, thoughts. Because when his father was binding him, he had seen the throne of glory. And from that time, his eyes had begun to darken. That he called Esau his elder son on the 14th of Nisan and said to him, my son, behold, I'm going to stop right there because there's way too much in that already. Okay, um, this tells us stuff we've never even heard. He says he started going blind from the time that he was tied up with his dad. Did anyone else get this? Yeah. yeah. Kade, you with me? Yeah. Am I the only one that read this? I read it. Did I know. Did it surprise anyone? No. So he went, um, he looked. I don't know why he went blind. I don't think Abraham ever like cut Maybe it was a blinding him. light? No, he, he didn't say that. It did. It he said saw the throne of glory. he saw. Yeah, he saw the throne of glory, and from that time, his eyes had begun to darken. I think it's like a slow progression. Because if like, you remember right, he looked up and saw the messengers all right there. And, and if we see on. the messengers, we get cataracts. We can't see later on. It was on. like the glory of Yah. Something, huh? Okay. Well, this is yeah. This is something again, interesting, but we, we don't know if it's true or not. All right, let's continue on. Um, I will say because when he was. When his father was binding him, he had seen the throne of glory, and from that time his eyes had begun to darken, that he called Esau, his elder son, on the 14th of Nisan, which is satanic. Nisan is not the proper naming. And that's Passover. That'd be the first month. Right, well, yeah, the wording of Nisan is, is that's all Babylonian Talmudic stuff, right? We don't have Nisan. We have first, first month, second month, third month. So anyway, on the 14th night of Nisan, they said to him, My son, behold this night, they on high praise Yahuwah of the world, and the treasures of the dew are opened in it. And he said, Behold, I am. Okay. And he said, Behold, now I am old. I know not the day of my death, but now take thy weapons, thy quiver and thy bow, and go forth into the field and take me venison and make me food such as I love, and bring it to me, and I will eat, that I would that my soul may bless thee ere I die. Okay. Um, anyone have anything on this? Mm, I don't think that last point. I think it's about the same. Yep. And Rivka heard by the Ruhak HaKodesh as Ishak spake with Esau his son. So that tells us a little bit more. So this may, so this is, if, if it's not a ruse, like if this was not a ruse, then this is absolutely the hand of Yah that is, that is doing this, right? It says the Rivka heard by the Ruha Kakadesh, by the, the Holy Spirit, right? Um, that she is a supernatural hearing or something, or she just heard it in her soul, maybe, or something of the sort. I don't know. Uh, could she hear something else later that did even more? Okay. Well, thanks, Eli. Spoiler alert. Okay. And Esau went to the field to take venison to bring it. And Rivka spake to Jacob, her son, saying, Behold, this night those on high praise Yahuwah of the world, and the treasures of the dew are open in it. And I have heard thy father speaking with Esau, thy brother, saying, Bring me venison and make me food, and I will bless thee in the presence of Yahuwah before I die. Okay, now, he doesn't actually die for, like, a long time after this. Yeah, I think he ends up meeting all of his uh, grandchildren, like, the 12 tribes. Yeah, so this is way before that. Okay, 
And now, my son, receive from me what I command thee. Go now to the house of the flock and take me from thence two fat kids of the goats, one for the Pascha and one for the oblation of the feast. And I will make of them food for thy father such as he loveth. Okay, this is yet another thing that we have no idea. We knew that he took two goats, right? We had no idea why they took two goats. This says it's about Passover. Now, is it Passover with a lamb? Isn't our, com our commands with a lamb, not a goat, right? Maybe that's how they did it before the Torah. Maybe they did it before the Torah with a goat. Maybe. Maybe. That's interesting. Okay, so again, the again, be very careful what we take to, to doctrine and what we don't. Okay. Um, okay, so it starts right here. And because Jacob was afraid to sin, fearing lest his father might curse him, he said, Behold, Esau, my brother, is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. Perhaps my father will feel me, and I shall be in his eyes like one who derideth him and bring upon me a curse and not a blessing. And she said, if with blessings he bless thee, they shall be upon thee and upon thy sons. And if with curses he should curse thee, they shall be upon me and upon my soul. Therefore receive from me and go and take from me. All right, what do you think when she says this? Do you think that's true? Uh, maybe. If he, <laughs> if he cursed if he cursed her, if, if, if this would have gone wrong, and he would have got cursed, would she have taken that curse upon him? I mean, this whole, everything, right here, everything in our entire history and society of the world that we know of would, would completely be distraught. All, all our genealogy would be messed up, everything we had. So if this certain part right here didn't go perfectly, everything in history would change. All right, I don't know. Um, dun -dun -dun. Here we go. And he went and took and brought to his mother, and his mother made food such as his father loved. And that's it. That's All right, it. let's roll to the next one. All right, so we're heading back down into the uh, Yah's scriptures, 15. And Ripka took the best garments of her elder son, Esau, which were with her in the house, and put them on Yaakov, her younger son. And she put the skins of the young goats on his hands and on the smooth part of his neck. Um, and I guess we can go over this. I mean, you guys, let's, let's talk about this real quick. If, if you... If I wanted to take a chunk of a cow and put it on your hands, would I know the difference between your hands? Okay, so is, I don't think it's the full flesh. I think she took like the fur, the hair, the hair, and then like glued a, it. Yeah, glued it somehow. Like so, I felt like hairy. Somehow glued it on there. That somehow. might make more sense. I don't think. I don't think she was saying like, like skin the cow cutting, cut the, cut the skin off because I'd feel you'd feel like like you'd feel like a couch. Like a chair. Yeah, you, it wouldn't feel right. Like like you if you if I felt a cow on your arm where I should feel the thing, and this guy's telling me he's somebody else, it's it's going to be messed up. Okay, 17. Then she gave the tasty dish and the bread which he had prepared into the hand of her son, Yaakov. And he went to his father and said, My father. And he said, Here I am. Who are you, my son? And Yaakov said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done as you said to me. Please rise, sit and eat of my wild game so that, you br that your being might barack me. Okay, it doesn't matter how many times you guys sit and try to trick me. If you guys sit behind me and talk to me for like 30 seconds, I'm going to have you guys figured out. There's no way you guys are going to be able to come and trick me. Maybe if it's old age. Maybe it is completely maybe, old age. Maybe he's going deaf. Maybe he's going deaf. But, I mean, he, he, he maybe he's going deaf. I don't know. Maybe there was just some confusion that was brought upon him as well. Confusion? Because if it was the Ruha Kakadesh that had told Rivka, maybe there was some other kind of something in play. So this is the hand of Yah that allows this great deception to, to happen for the greater good? Maybe. Maybe. Okay, all right. Um, where am I at, You like? You're on uh, 20. 20. All right, 20. But Yitchak said to his son, how is it that you have found it so quickly, my son? And he said, because Yahuwah, your Elohim, brought it to me. But he should have known there because Esau like what didn't believe that that was what, that, who it was. Hold on, would that be a lie right there? Because Yahoo, your Elohim brought it to me. Um, it's, 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 I don't, it's, I don't, it's, it's, it'd be like a white lie. I don't feel it's, like, it's a it's lie. Wrong things going on. The, everything, everything's wrong. Like, but so many things have been committed. At some level, Yahoo did bring it to him right through the hand of his mother and through the hand of him going out to the, the feeding flocks. I mean, and, he did go out and they probably like show up to him because they thought they were feeding. Yah, Yah did deliver it to him, so maybe maybe it's not too bad a lie. Twenty one. Then Yitzhak said to Yaakov, Please come near so that I feel you, my son, whether you are truly are my son, Esau, or not. Now, if he obviously is onto this, right? Now, if he's like, 
figuring this out, Esau's gonna or Jacob's gonna be freaking he's out. He's gonna start sweating. <laughs> well, he's probably already sweating. I mean, this is you're trying to pull off a ruse into your blind father, something that could totally. I mean, that's the thing is if he got found out here, your parents are gonna lose a lot of respect. I mean, this is this is a lot of there's a lot of problems here, and I'm yeah, glad Yah made this work out in the end. Okay, twenty two. You like? Yes. And Jacob went near to Yitzhak, his father, and he felt him and said, The voice is the voice of Jacob, but the hands are the hands of Esau. Huh. Okay. Um, I guess I didn't clue him in. Or, again, he's either part of the ruse. Yah has him completely confused. Um, and he's just going with it. And this is a blessing thing. This, I mean, this is a, this is a huge maybe thing. Isaac's like, trick me as much as possible so I don't feel any guilt. Yeah, maybe. I mean, if it was a ruse, then he's got to play his part. Because he, the problem is his kid is going to be coming in later, Esau, and he really has to play that part. Right now, it's not such a big thing. But uh, when his other son comes in, they, they have to do this if it's a ruse. Okay, 23. And he did not recognize him, for his hands were hairy like his brother Esau's hands. And he barak him. And he said... Are you truly my son Esau? And he said, I am. Mm, All right. That's a lie. That was, that's a lie. Yeah, so that was a that was um, a, a definitely a lie right there. And um, All right. Okay, sorry guys. We got some dog stuff. We got chairs that just tipped over the dogs. Um, I don't know if we're gonna make this one out of this, honestly. They're just getting a little wound up. Alright, hold on. We got some we got a couple people taking dogs out. Sorry, guys. All right. All right. Nine dogs out the door and one kid and the wife. All right. Here we go. Okay. So, again, he's, he, they're doing this ruse. Are you my son? And he said, I am. 25. And he said, bring it near to me and let me eat of my son's wild game so that my bean might barack you. So he brought it near to him and he ate and brought him wine and he drank. All right. Do you think he would notice anything between, beside, between Ribka's cooking and Esau's cooking? Probably not. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Esau probably came knew Ribka's cooking. Probably, he, she probably taught him what cooking they, they that he did know. And I mean, uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. The women can make the, the men what they are after. All right. And we're at the top? Yeah. Okay. So now we're back to the targums at the top. And it kind of gets odd here. So we want to take a um, deep look into this. And Rivka took the pleasant vestments of Esau, her elder son, which had formerly been Adam's, but which that day Esau had not worn, but that remained with her in the house. And with them, she dressed Jacob, her younger son. Okay, so hold on here. Now, we got to talk about this real quick because some of this may make sense, but some of it not. Now, the what we know, it, we don't know exactly if, if, this, if, this, if the clothes are snakeskin or what they are not. But we do know that Esau did kill King Nimrod, and Nimrod did have the clothes of Adam's. And so this would make sense, whether or not it's snakeskin or whether it's not something else. But the this interesting thing is, is it's alluded to that once Nimrod got these clothes on, that he became stronger. Or there was something about these clothes that was very weird, which is kind of weird that, that Jacob got these same things. So um, I don't know what to make of that. Um, what do we got? Eli, where are you at? Uh, are you trying to do messages there? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you are at... Jay, we get the messages. Uh, yep. Since we lost mom. And skin to the kids, I think. All right, so we're back to the top. Sorry, guys. We're, we're a little uh, disconglomerated here. And the skins of the kids she laid upon his hands and the smooth parts of his neck. And the food and the bread she had made she set in the hand of Jacob, her son. And he entered unto his father and said, My father? And he said, Behold, me. Who art thou, my son? And Jacob said to his father, I am Esau. Thy firstborn. All right, there's a lie. I have done as thou spakest with me. Arise now, sit and eat of my venison, that thy soul may bless me. And Ishak said to his son, What is this that thou hast found so soon, my son? And he said, Because Yahuwah thy Elohim had prepared it before me. And Ishak said to Jacob, Come near now, and I will feel thee, my son, whether thou be my son Esau or not. And Jacob drew near to Ishak, his father, who touched him and said, The voices of the voice of Jacob, nevertheless, the feeling of the hands is as the feeling of the hands of Esau. But he recognized him not, because his hands were hairy as the hands of Esau, his brother, and he blessed him. And he said, But art thou my son Esau? And he said, I am. And he said, Draw near, and I will eat my son's venison, that my soul may bless thee. And he approached him, and he ate. And he had no wine, 
But an angel prepared it for him from the wine which had been kept in its grapes from the days of the beginning of the world. And he gave it into Jacob's hand, and Jacob brought it to his father, and he drank. All right, what are we talking about here? Did they just, like, somehow drug him with some special wine? I think the angels gave Jacob some wine. Why, why, what do we make of this? Anyone have any thoughts on this this particular piece right here? Um, I guess it's probably, As he approached it's probably him, for the Passover ceremony. Why would they have no wine? These people, he was supposed to be blessed with having wine. I mean, everybody had wine. Why would they have no wine? Maybe they ran out. Maybe they... Yeah, Esau liked to drink. Esau liked to drink? Maybe. I don't know. Um, but why is it that... Uh, where the angel, I mean, does anyone have any ideas why the angels would... would prepare him a special and wine. And it's like wine from the grapes from the beginning of the world. Yeah, and so that means that would be for something like, what, uh, Eden or something? The grapes? Maybe. Maybe because we read, where did we read before that the grape, was it Adam, Adam the Targums? Adam, Adam and Eve's? Are you sure the one where the uh, he got the, he had the the grapes, that came, a vine that came from Eden, it came up, no, this wasn't in... The fix, that was Adam and Eve. No, this isn't the fix. This is the other thing. Let me know if you guys remember this. I think um, it's from... Is it from Targums? Because I think it was earlier in Targums where we talked about it. A vine came into uh, Noah after the flood. A yeah, vine yeah, from yeah. Eden, and it grew up the special, like, um, One grapes. Day. Yeah, the grapes came up in a day. There's something uh, special about this. All right, let's continue on. Um, uh, yeah, that's it. Now that's it? All right, my, all right, so we're heading back into the scriptures at the bottom. 25? 26. 26. And his father, Yitchak, said to him, Please come near and kiss me, my son. And he came near and kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his garments, and Barak him and said, See, the smell of my son is like the smell of a field which Yahuwah has Barak. Okay, so she just did she just dress him in these clothes? Are these in Adam's clothes, supposedly? From the Targums, is that what we have? Yeah. And so he was able to smell on these clothes. I mean, because if this is true, these clothes came off Nimrod much earlier, like 30 years earlier it, it came out with, with Nimrod because... Um, Right after he killed Nimrod and he stole his blessing, um, he went uh, to Shims for like 14 years, 14 or 15 years, and then he went and he got with his wife. Is anyone with, with me on that? Yeah. Okay. All right, let's continue on. But he's not with his wife yet. No, he's not with his wife. Yeah. So it hasn't been 14 years. Well, it was, it was the first one he went over there with Shim for a while. Right. Yeah. Isaac. Isaac. Are you Isaac? Or yeah, Isaac. Yeah. So he went with them for a while. No, that was before. I'm getting my guys mixed up here. Um, are you guys with me on this? I'm kind of confused. You're confused on this whole thing? All right, well, let's continue on. I'll, I'll find this, and I'll bring it back up in another one. Okay, 28 um, is where we're at. Yeah. And Elohim give you of the dew of the Shimaim, of the fatness of the earth, and plenty of grain and wine. Let people serve you, and nations bow down to you. Be master over your brothers, and let your mother's sons bow down to you. Cursed be those cursing you, and Barak be those Barak you. And it came to be as soon as Yitchak had finished, Baraka, Jacob, and Jacob had hardly left the presence of Yitchak, his father, that Esau, his brother, came in from his hunting. Yeah, this is going to be some you interesting times. you think they times. passed each other? you think they passed each other? Uh, I do I not. don't think so. I think he went out one way and he got in the other. Uh, yeah, I think, I think Jacob was on his way. I think he was flying out of there. I think he knew because he was coming back, though. I think he was, he was near. Yeah. All right, 31. And he too had made a tasty dish and brought it to his father and said to his father, let my father rise and eat of his son's wild game so that your being might barack me. And his father, Yitchak, said to him, who are you? And he said, I am your son, your firstborn Esau. Then Yitchak shuddered with exceedingly great trembling and said, who was it then who hunted wild game and brought it to me? And I ate all of it before you came and have barack him. Even so, he is Baruch. Now, one thing about like eating like a steak from a cow and eating things from like a deer or elk, you can taste wild game. It's totally different. Like the taste of wild game is not the same as like hamburger. Um, and so there would I think I believe there would be a difference between this goat taste and this. I don't know. Maybe in the savory sauce or something, you wouldn't be able to taste it. And but, it's actually not like a deer or anything that he got for uh, Isaac. There's what? another spoiler. Is there another spoiler? Oh, okay. Yeah, it's actually quite crazy. Okay, so let's continue on then. Um, we'll get to the spoiler here. Um, 33. Then Yitchak shuddered with seeing the great trembling. Uh, I think I did that one. Yeah, in 34. 34. When Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with an exceedingly great and bitter cry and said to his father, Baruch me. Baruch me, me too, oh my father. And he said, your brother came with deceit and took your Baraka. 
All right, so we're heading back up to the Targums at the top. Things are getting a little, a little wild here. And Isaac, his father, said, Draw near now and kiss me, my son. And Jacob drew near and kissed him. And he smelled the smell of his vestments and blessed him and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of a fragrant incense, which is to be offered on the mountain of the house of the sanctuary, which shall be called the field which Yahuwah hath blessed, and that he, he hath chosen, that therein his Shekinah might dwell. Okay, and you know, another thing too is when you guys, when I get a hug from one of you guys or a kiss, every one of you guys hug differently and every one of you guys give me a different kiss. Nothing is the exact same. So every, I'm just thinking this entire thing, I would be, the red flags would be going off. I'd be thinking something, some, something was happening here. So if, his, if it was not a ruse, um, he really got tricked really, really good. All right. Therefore. Therefore, the word of Yahuwah, Give thee of the good dews which descend from the heavens and of the good fountains that spring up and make the herbage of the earth to grow from beneath and plenty of provision and wine. Let peoples be subject to thee, all the sons of Esau and, the, and kingdoms bend before thee. All the sons of Keturah, a chief and a ruler, be thou over thy brethren and let the sons of thy mother salute thee. Let them who curse thee, my son, be accursed as Bilambar Beor. And them who bless thee be blessed as Moshe the prophet, the scribe of Israel. Now the other version of this says, Let people serve before thee, all the sons of Esau, all the kings be subject to thee, all the sons of Ishmael. Be thou a chief and a ruler over the sons of Keturah. All the sons of Laban, the brother of thy mother, shall come, shall come before thee and salute thee. Whoso curseth thee, Jacob my son, shall be accursed as Bilam bin Beor. And whoso blesseth thee shall be blessed as Moshe, the prophet and scribe of Israel. Okay. So how do they? How does he know of Moshe? Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know on this. Okay, where are we at on this? Eli? Uh, as the truth man. Okay. And when Ishak had finished blessing Jacob, and Jacob had only gone out about two hand breaths from Ishak his father, that Esau his brother came in from his hunting, and the word of Yahuwah had impeded him from taking cling venison. But he had found a certain dog and killed him and made food of him and brought to his father and said to his father, Arise, my father, and eat of my venison, that thou soul may bless me. Thy soul may bless me. Why would he do that? He deserves no blessings. That doesn't, blo that doesn't make any sense to me at all. That, why would he do that? Because y'all didn't let him find any clean venison. Yeah, come on. This guy was a hunter, though. What? Hold on. Killed the dog, man. So he, I don't, do you guys think this is true? These guys, we, we're Torah keepers, right? A dog is unclean. Esau is not. Well, he grew up in that, right? Do you think he eats dogs? He might just do the trick flying. Maybe like we are, did, it is it enough. just normal for people to just go eat a dog or something and, and cook the dog up? That doesn't maybe sound... It's a form of a dog. So maybe it was like... Have found a, it said it's found a certain dog and certain killed him. Dog. And made food of him and brought to his father. This is, just sounds completely whacked. Well, I don't say. I don't know what to say either. Um, yeah, these are definitely something there. I, I don't know what to make of that. Um, no, I mean, is he didn't get no blessing. Yeah, if, that, if he got no blessing, if that was the case, I mean, that, that's just that's the, a terrible thing. Kind of deserved it. Yeah, but that, that's just really weird. Okay, let's go on. And Isaac, his father, said to him, Who art thou? And he said, I am thy firstborn, Esau. And Isaac was moved with great agitation when he heard the voice of Esau and the smell of his food rose in his nostrils as the smell of burning of Gehinnom. And he said, who is he who hath got venison and come to me? And I have eaten of all which he brought me before thou camest. And I have blessed him and he shall too be blessed. Man, I just don't, I don't know if Yah would let him eat like a dog, right? That's, Why do you smell the burning of Gehinnom? I don't, I don't know. It, like, uh. Brother what? Glenn says that would have been an insult to y'all. Dog is not food. Yeah, that's it's a complete insult to. I mean, it would it would have been like you absolutely hate your parents. Like like you want to. Um, well, we know Esau did. Well, we to a certain degree, yes. He he had problems with his parents, but to the point of him bringing a dog. All right, let's continue. I don't know, folks. When Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with a cry exceeding great and bitter, and said to his father, "Bless me, me also, my father." And he said, Thy brother hath come with subtility and hath received from me thy blessing. And he said, His name is truly called Jacob, for he hath treacherously, he has dealt treacherously with me these two times. My birthright he took, and behold, now he hath received my blessing. Okay, now we're back down below. 36. 36. So hold on. 
Glenn says, that is somewhat ironic moment since Esau's oath to sell his birthright should have meant allowing Jacob to take the blessing in the first place. Okay, read, read, read that to me. That was somewhat ironic moment since Esau's oath to sell the birthright should have meant allowing Jacob to take the blessing in the first place. Right, well, yeah, and I mean, he's, he's yeah, no, this entire situation is completely whack, but um, yeah, I don't know. I have no ideas on this. Where are we at yet? 36. All right. And Esau said, and Esau said, was his name then called Jacob? For he has caught me by the heel these two times. He took my birthright and see, now he has taken my Baraka. And he said, have you not reserved a Baraka for me? Okay. I don't know. I just, I'm still stuck on this whole dog thing. I don't know. I just, the, the entire thing would be in the entire odd situation. 37. Then Yitchak answered and said to Esau, see, I have given... I have made him your master and all his brothers I have given to him as servants and I have sustained him with grain and wine and what then shall I do for you, my son? And Esau saw, said to his father, have you only one Baraka, my father? Barak me, me too, oh my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Now that's interesting, right? I mean, does that, does this lead us to believe that, that there's only one blessing, only one good blessing? Uh, I don't think so. I think... Who's getting the first blessing at this table? Who gets the who gets the last one? I mean, who gets what's left? I mean, how does that roll down? I mean, some of the blessings. I mean, we have heard other blessings before, but I mean, this I is think... this is this is interesting though, because he basically by his words, he initiated stuff that he can't undo. Right? He is unable to. He, he right here. He, he they're both going to start crying. They can't undo his blessing. Right? It's a one time thing. So. I guess that's something we should all be very, very understanding of is, is words um, are concrete in a certain way. And what you say, you know, it's always going to be written on the, the heavenly tablets, either good or bad. And we're going to have to review everything that we say. But when we make a blessing or when we do this and there's only one to be given and we can't undo it, we, we should understand there's, there's that. Okay, 39. Um, and Yitchak, his father, answered and said to him, See, your dwelling is of the fatness of the earth. And of the dew of the Shimeim from above. And by your sword you are to live and serve your brother. And it shall be when you grow restless that you shall break his yoke from your neck. <laughs> okay, thoughts on that? I mean, that's, that's, that's quite the blessing, right? Well, at least he gets fatness of the earth, right? Yeah. A little bit of it, right? He gets the fatness of the earth and, the, and some rain from the Shimeim. Um, but he says your sword you are to live. So he basically, he's a, he's a warrior, right? He's a fighter. And that's, that's how he'll live. What do you guys make of the... Um, when you grow, re how did he know this? Why did he say this? When you grow restless, that you shall break his yoke from your neck. What, is, what does he mean by this? Or what is, he, what is he saying? I think he's saying that he will be his servant. That like, and his brother, when he's like tired, his brother's yoke fall off his neck and he could be free. Yeah, but I mean, that, what, what caused that? In the future, what do we know that the yoke would come off of his neck? Do we ever know that he ever got out from under this? Because he, supposedly he died by um, his brother's hand as well. Spoiler from the tar room. It says that when the when the children of Israel stop keeping his commandments. Oh, that what? That uh, you'll fall off his neck. Oh. So basically, like his children, when they uh, like they'll no longer have to be like servants of Israel. When they point. stop keeping. When Israel stops, stops keeping the commands. Like when they fall off right the straight path. All right. All right. Let's continue. Forty one. Mm -hmm. And Esau hated Jacob because of this of the Baraka with which his father Barak him, and Esau said in his heart. The days of mourning for my father draw near. Then I am going to kill my brother Jacob. Okay. Um, what do you mean? What does he mean? The days of mourning his father draw near. So he's dead, still alive. So basically, after he's dead, and after the mourning, he's going to go and kill Jacob. Right, Jacob. but he's not even dead yet. So the days of mourning yeah. wouldn't even be there yet. And he didn't die for a long time either. Right. right up top now. All right, at the top. And he said, "Hast thou not reserved a blessing for me?" And Isaac answered and said to Esau, "Behold, I have appointed him a ruler over thee." And all his brethren have I made to be his servants, and with provision and wine have I sustained him. And now go, leave me, for what can I do for thee, my son? And Esau answered his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, me also, my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Ishak answered and said to Esau, Behold, among the good fruits of the earth shall be thy habitation, and with the dews of the heavens from above. And upon thy sword shalt thou depend. Entering at every place, yet thou shalt be supple and credulous and be in subjection to thy brother. But it will be that when his sons become evil 
and fall from keeping the commandments of the law, thou shalt break his yoke of servitude from off thy neck. All right. So that makes a little more sense here. Okay, so... I didn't thought it come, like, that would be a blessing for Jacob because Jacob was never a swordsman. Jacob never lived by the sword. And, you know, that's the thing as well. You know, on the first first blessing, did he not use his name? Did he not use... Yeah, when Esau was blessed, like... Yeah, wouldn't it have been totally separate? Your your brother, Jacob, will be living off of, you know, you will... The, wouldn't it have been, been total? I mean, did he not use names or anything of that sort when they're doing that because it would have been totally separate? And, and if we're talking about... You know, blessings and, and curses or things that, that stay forever. Um, is it? Did he get the names wrong or something? I, I just I, I need to be a fly on the wall, I guess, to, to figure this one out. All right, where are we at, Eli? Yeah, uh, Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Okay, and it's up at the top, guys. And by thy weapons thou shalt live, and before thy brother be subject. And it shall be when the sons of Jacob labor in the law and keep the commandments, they will set the yoke of subjection on thy neck. But when the sons of Jacob withdraw themselves and study not the law, nor keep the commandments, behold, then shalt thou break their yoke of subjection from off thy neck. Okay, so that told me that basically when the sons of Yisrael stopped keeping the Torah, which which essentially was, was it, 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 it was on and off, right? It was which all over. time? Yeah, which time? Okay, so th that makes sense. All right, here we are. And Esau kept hatred in his heart against Jacob, his brother, on account of the order of blessing which with his father had blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, I will not do as Cain did, who slew Habel in the lifetime of his father, for which his father begat Sheth, but will wait till the time when the days of mourning for the dead of my father come. Then I will kill Jacob, my brother, and I and will be found the killer and the heir. So, what, what do you mean? What's he mean? And be found the killer well, so, and the heir. So it's being like he's like he's like he don't want to kill him in the days of his dad's life. So he's camping with our kids because his dad him. would give him his he, something yeah, else. Yeah, he'd give right? it to his next kid because he'd be righteous. And so then he's like, then I'll kill him to camp with our kid, and I'll be the heir to all the blessings. Yeah, wild. Yeah, this dude really did serve a dog, like dog to his dad, man. He he, he, he might he, deserve. He, he deserves. No, say anywhere that Abraham ate the, or that Isaac ate the food. If he smell if it smelled like the smell of gay hen, he better not put that in his mouth. Right, if it burned his nostrils, that's something he shouldn't put in his mouth. Oh, Obviously, I was. I mean, that would be an abomination. That's a, that's unclean food. We would not eat a dog. We pet our dogs. Yeah. All right. If, I, if someone served me, I'd be like, "Well, what is this?" Yeah. Well, I mean, it would. I, I just don't think it would don't taste hit, like yeah, a pet. It, it wouldn't be good. It'd be like, "Well, what are you serving me, son?" Yeah. yeah All right. Forty-two. Now we're at the bottom, guys. And the words of Esau, her older son, were reported to Ribka, and she sent and called Jacob, her younger son, and said to him, "See, your brother Esau comforts himself concerning you." To kill you, how do you how do you, how do you think she found it? Was Esau yeah. just telling everybody you think? No, nope. uh, you'll see. You, you, Targums. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Eli. Because he was actually thinking this. He was thinking this. He didn't say it out loud. No. All right. Forty three. And now, my son, listen to my voice and rise. Flee to my brother. Later. Until your brother's wrath turns away. Watch out, let's do. <laughs> until your brother's displeasure turns away from you and he forgets what you have done to him and I shall sin and bring you from there. Why should I be bereaved of you both in one day? And the Ribka said to Yitzhak, I am disgusted with my life because of the daughters of Keth. If Yaakov takes a wife from the daughters of Keth, like these daughters of the land, what is my life to me? And to understand what she's even talking about right here, you got to read this in, in uh, Jasher. And I'm if you read in Jasher, it's only like one or two chapters away. So I think I'm in chapter 29 right now, and it just it talks all about this. And it was talking about Esau that he went and he he he, he brought a bunch of girls to his wives to their house, and they were offering. Um, uh, things to, to fake Elohim and the girls were all doing idols and it was it was really freaking Rebecca Rebecca out and she's like please you know if if my son goes and takes one of these women from there it's gonna be over what what is my life then when when we're there like that all right so we're ahead we're gonna finish up here on the targums at the top and the words of Esau her elder son who thought in his heart to kill Jacob were shown by the Ruha Kadesh to Rivka and she sent and called Jacob her younger son and said to him behold Esai thy brother lieth in wait for thee, and plotteth against thee to kill thee. And now, my son, hearken to me, arise, escape for thy life, and go unto Laban my brother at Quran, and dwell with him a few days, until the wrath of thy brother is abated, until thy brother's anger have quieted from thee, and he have forgotten what thou hast done to him. And I will send and take thee from thence. Now, she sent him down there for a couple of days. 
14 years later, this dude comes 21. back. It was it 21 years? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is, uh, these are the, <laughs> some seriously long days. <laughs> Why should I be bereaved of you both in one day, thou being slain and he driven forth, as Hava was bereaved of Habel, whom Cain slew, and both were removed from before Adam and Hava all the days of the life of Adam and Hava. And the Jerusalem uh, thing says, until the time when the bitterness of thy brother shall be turned away from thee. And Rivka said to Isaac, I am afflicted in my life on account of the indignity of the daughters of Keth. Heth. If Jacob take a wicked wife from the daughters of Heth, such as these of the daughters of the people of the land, what will life be to me? Where did you say it said that? She figured this out? Did I ever read that? Yeah. Maybe I read it and I didn't take it in. Right here. In the words of Esau, her elder son, who thought in his heart to kill Jacob, were shown by the Ruach HaKodesh to Rivka. Uh, okay. All right. Well, there it is. Okay, well, I guess that is that. Um, that was kind of an interesting reading today. Um, and again, I don't know so much as once we get out of Genesis if we're going to mess with the Targums of Exodus um, or any more out of this. I don't know if it's so good that we do it or if it's so bad that we don't. I'm not sure yet. What do you have, Mystical? Brother Glenn says, Rebecca will never see Jacob again. Her punishment for fraud is not small. Does she ever see Jacob again? Did she die before that? Or, hold on here. Did, is that true? I don't think. Where do we go? Let's go. Let's, he goes back. I mean, I know, I know that uh, Isaac dies. I think he talked about in Jasher when Joseph's in prison in Egypt. Right, but when his mom died, he never saw his mom again. Jacob. Yeah, Jacob never saw his mom again. Rebecca. I thought he did because you're never. Nobody's ever be able to hear you five feet away from the table. I, I promise. Saying. Here, why don't you come up here to the table so people can hear you. Okay, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Um, we'll have to look at that. Really, Glenn, I don't know. You got me on that one. Okay, well, I guess that is it, um, everybody. That is going to end it for us today. We, uh, I guess we will end this with a song, and then we will call it good. Um, if anyone has any kind of prayer requests or anything like that, get them in the uh, chat or get them to an email. You guys can always email us. We're always available anytime, and we thank you guys very, very much. For being with us, uh, we love you guys very, very much. We love you dearly. We cannot wait to see you guys in the kingdom to come. We cannot wait for that celebration, and um, we are, it's just going to be a party. It's going to be a big party. It's going to be a lot of fun when we put Hasatan and the evil away from us, and the world is, is a much better place. All right. Anyone else have anything else? No. I think okay. That's it. What are we doing? What are we in with, uh, Eli? Um, any of these? Rin, do you, oh, run the heavens. I like this one. All right. Let's roll it. All right, everyone. Much love to you.
Shabbat shalom, everybody. We love you very much. Have a wonderful day. Hey, shalom. Shalom, shalom, everyone.